Hey guys, Malice here, and I just want to do a quick update on the XP and rare mob drop grinder that I made last week. Um, the one that I uploaded was just a, a quick test, really, for the rare mob drops. Um, as a result, it was only really available to be made in creative mode because it used the eggs in dispensers. Uh, a lot of people were asking whether it was possible to adapt it for survival mode. The short answer is yes, the long answer is yes, but not so much. Um, it is possible, um, but due to the fact you have to use a spawner, um, the spawn rates are much, much lower, which makes it a lot less efficient. Um, this is basically what you will end up with. Uh, there are some limitations to it, um, some reasons that it, well, it's a very different shape, quite obviously. Um, and there are a few bits which I'll need to run through about how it works. So rather than just explaining to you how it works like I did with the last one, I'm actually going to go ahead and build one uh, so you can see all the individual parts to it individually. Um, I'll just have a quick go through a quick run through of what it is. This is basically a dungeon that I've uh, lifted out. I've put it all open like this so that you can see what's kind of going on. Um, obviously when you make it yourself you won't need to build these towers or anything. You just need to probably just need to tunnel through the ground and things. Um, but like I say here we've got a dungeon which is attached to a mob elevator uh, across this sort of aqueduct thing at the top and into the um, drop on the side. Obviously we've got our mobs knocking about inside there. Um, there are a few things that you need to bear in mind about dungeons when you're making this, uh, which I shall just run through over here. So dungeons work in a very specific way. This circle on the outside is the limit of the dungeon, I, as in as long as you're outside of this circle, nothing will spawn in the dungeon. You can see that the zombie in the center has stopped spinning, there are no flames on the spawner or anything. As soon as I walk inside of this, then they come back. And this is, like I say, this is a sphere around the whole thing, so it's not just um, horizontally, it's also vertically, and uh, yeah. Basically, this is 16 blocks, so if you count the spawner as zero, so we've got zero here, and we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we've got 16 blocks between this and the spawner. Um, if I just do this, and you can actually see it's not actually 16, it's about 15 and a half. If I go up to the front of this block, then the spawner is on. If I go to the back, it switches off. So it's 15 and a half, but for purposes um, of this video, we'll say it's 16. Makes it a bit easier. Um, there are a couple of things apart from this. Obviously, to make this continue to spit out zombies for our um, for our trap, we need to be inside this circle. However, zombie uh, spawner will not put any more than eight mobs out inside this um, inside this sphere. So, in order to get the spawner to continuously spit out new zombies, you need to transport them outside of this sphere so that they're out here somewhere. This obviously causes a few problems and may means that the uh, spawner itself has to be a very specific size. So then you need to be stood on the inside, but the zombies need to land on the outside. Okay. So I'm going to run through uh, how to build it, and um, I'll do it around this trap over here. I'm going to stop the video now, and uh, we will continue with it in a second. Okay, you'll notice that I have switched to a uh, normal default world, because um, I wanted to build it without being trolled by slimes constantly. So. The first thing that we need to do in order to make this thing is sort the dungeon section, make sure that it is ready to go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out the floor uh, and all these bits where I'm going to be doing like lots of digging or building very repetitively, I'm just going to speed up the video so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. Um, so here goes.
Okay, I've dug out um, two deep underneath the spawner so that things can pass underneath it nice and easy. I need to dig out a channel down the center here. Just like that. And also need to dig out underneath these side walls which are running parallel to this channel. And they're going to need to be dug back quite far. There's three inside, four there, and they need to be eight in total. So if I go outside, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that needs to be on both sides the full width of the dungeon, like so. So I'll go ahead and do that now as well. Excellent. Okay. You need to chuck in some water into those channels that I've just dug. Um, you can do every other square. That should be enough. This one there. But just so that it flows down all the way along the side so it's nice and even. And you'll see that it'll go to the channel but won't flow into the channel. Just like that. Now the channel itself needs to be seven long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the next one needs to go down. And then we go forward. One, two, three, four. Is that enough? Two. Oh no, one more. So it needs to go five. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. Rather than start on the mob elevator, it's easier to start on the drop that they fall down first of all, so you can get the sizings right. So, starting from the spawner, I know that's zero, and it's one, two, three, four, and the first one outside is five. So it's five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. That's number 15. That's the one that we are going to be stood on to collect our stuff. So we're going to stick six blocks here. Just like that. Okay, that means that they're going to be falling down onto the 16th block, which is the one which um, is halfway between the mob spawner being on and the mob spawner being off. That is. It makes it basically means that anywhere I stand on this block, the mob spawner will always be on. Um, the likelihood of having all eight uh, zombies land on this half of this block is basically zero. So uh, that's not a problem. We shouldn't have a problem with that. Now, with the uh, creative mode version of this mob trap, I said that they need to drop 23 blocks in order for them to be damaged down to half a heart. That isn't true with this one. In this one, you don't really want them dropping any more than 22. This is because the mob elevator, this bit here, is going to have a lot of water in it and you can risk um, them drowning slightly in the water and losing a little bit of health. If that happens, when they drop down 23 blocks, they will die and you won't get any drops or experience from them at all. So instead we make this one no more than 22, um, 22 high. So let's see, that's one, two, three, four. And I'm going to speed up uh, this whole building section here. Okay, so that is our 22 block drop. We need the aqueduct going across the top. That's going to be seven long, not eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, no more than seven. Um, I'll explain why in a minute. I know uh, water blocks will travel, well, water will travel seven from a source block. Um, but yeah, we only want this one to be seven long because the source block is actually going to be here eventually so it'll, it will end up just reaching this edge don't worry okay this is where our mob elevator is going to be right here okay we need to put a block on top there 
I'll explain why in a minute, but don't forget that block. Um, and we're just going to build straight down with this bit down to there, okay? Uh, again, I'm going to speed up the video so you don't have to sit through me doing it. Okay, um, it's probably worth pointing out at this moment in time, yes I am building this in creative, that is for speed's sake, um, and obviously when you're doing this, your dungeon will probably be underground, so you won't have to build these big tunnels and stuff, you're just going to have to dig, the, dig out the centre bit, which will make it a lot easier for you. Um, we're just going to build this bit up here. This is where the aqueduct is going to be. I tend to do this three high so that there's uh, plenty of headroom for the zombies to get through. Otherwise, you can end up with kind of zombie clogs or skeleton clogs. And that's a, a tough thing to explain to the plumber. Cool, so that's that bit. Um, something else that's worth doing just at this point in time is just building a block of three across the back there. And maybe a couple more going down. This just makes sure that you're guiding the zombies down to the front half of this. I'll show you why that is a little bit later on in the video. Okay. From the back here, this block that we placed at the top, we're going to build one, two, three off of that. Oh no, sorry. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, that'll do. Two, three like that. And we're just going to do that. We need this extra little channel here. Okay, now that we've got all this bit sorted, we can block in the top bit. Let's just change it to daytime quickly so we can see what we're doing. Just put a roof over the top, we don't want our zombies bursting into flames before we want them dead, like so. And right here we're going to start building our mob elevator. Now this is, I, I can't claim sadly to be the first person to come up with this, I have seen uh, other examples of it on YouTube and around the place, so you will see it about. Um, what we need to build it is some signs and some buckets of water. Uh, the first sign that you want to place should go at the same level as this block here on the side, like that. So it's it's on the same level as this block. Um, you need another one above it, staggered to the left, or to the right or whatever, um, and then we're just going to zigzag them down, like so. Make sure you don't miss any out. And make sure you use signs for this and not ladders. Ladders still have a hitbox on them, signs do not. If you've got a ladder with a hitbox down through this um, through this elevator, then again zombies will get clogged up on it and that's no good. Okay. Make sure that you remember to put one at the bottom here, that one's important, and another one there, so you've got a sort of diamond of four. Uh, another thing I'm just going to do quickly is I like to put a window in here just so that we can see that the zombies are all traveling up it okay, that there's no clogs. We can check that it's working okay. Why can't I see my glass? Glass, glass, glass. There it is. So one, two. Cool. Right. We need to drop a water block in at the back here. That will flow down here and stop at that sign. Uh, we then need to put some water in here, like this. So the signs will keep this water in check in the right place. So we just need to fill in between each of these signs all the way up to the top. Uh, the way this works is that mobs such as zombies and things will always try and float to the top of water, um, which means that the whole way up 
they're going to be floating to the top, hitting the top of the water, bobbing up, hitting the next one, bobbing up, hitting the next one, and so on and so forth. Um, that'll make them ascend quicker, but it'll also mean that um, they're not drowning, or they shouldn't drown too much on the way up. They still will, occasionally you'll get ones which get kind of caught in between them or something, and they do drown a little bit, but that should on the whole stop them. Okay, our source block for the aqueduct goes in here, and you'll see it flow and stop at the edge here. That's why the aqueduct is only seven long. And the final one that we need goes in the back here. That'll make sure that when they pop up here, they don't just sit on top of this bit and bob around and get stuck, because again, we'll get zombie clogs. So that'll just push them through the whole way. And then I can just close up the top here like so. I apologize for my dogs. And that is pretty much it. That will That is a fully functioning XP and um, mob, uh, rare mob drop grinder. Few final things that you'll want to do. Cover up this bit of water here. Um, try and use a full block rather than a half block for this. Half blocks still let through light so that will decrease the spawn rate inside the dungeon. If you use half blocks, so use a full block cover up those waters, those, those water channels, like so. And finally, the last few bits that I'm going to do, I'm going to um, sort out a bit at the back here. Um, I'll show you for why in a second, but we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. I'm going to put a water channel in here. That is because what tends to happen when the zombies drop down this, or zombies or skeletons or whatever, when they drop down this chute, they land right up against this wall, and you're stood right up against this wall, they'll actually knock you back a little bit. Which means anything which drops on those back blocks of this will not be able to be collected by you. Okay, so you need uh, a way of pushing them forwards so that you can pick them up. That's why I do this um, too deep as opposed to just the one, because um, otherwise you, it, you'll get knocked back by the zombies and you won't be able to pick everything up. So there, there is method in my madness. Do not fear. And we're just going to go all the way around, like so. To there. To there. And you can even... Um, oops. Block this bit in a little bit. To try and prevent you um, being knocked about the place by other mobs. During the night or whatever, if you're AFK here. So yeah, you can stick a little doorway or something in there. Let's do that. If I can spot a door. Cool. And like I say, we're just going to put some water in the back here. One, two, three. And that will flow around to here. And push anything which drops back there towards you. Okay, and that is pretty much the mob grinder complete. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to block that one off, that last little block. I'm going to knock out these torches. Uh, can't reach that one. one. That one. And of course that one. And we're going to leave. And that is now a fully functioning um, XP and rare mob drop grinder. So what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to make sure that I have no XP on me at all. Because uh, I would have been picking some up uh, randomly whilst I've been making this. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all of my XP and then I'm going to stand at the bottom for about 10-15 minutes and see how much XP and how many rare mob drops I get in that time. Okay, so I'll catch you in a minute. Okay, I've got rid of my XP, so we're going to go inside of our mob trap. Uh, just sit here for, like I say, 10-15 minutes and see how well we do.
Okay, so that's about 10 minutes that I've been sat there now. And as you can see, I haven't got that many of the rare mob drops at all. I've got a helmet, an iron ingot, and an iron sword. And that's basically it. However, I have gone up by 12 XP. That's two ingots now. Um, 12, and so the X, for XP, it's really quite good. But for the mob drops, and so I was getting about three or four of my test runs of the other one earlier. So that seems to be about average. Um, obviously, something you could do is just sort of AFK here for a bit and wait for there to be a whole bunch of zombies in here and then just kill the lot. Um, or you could come down uh, during the night time when you can't be building and just sit in here rather than go caving or use your bed or something. That's uh, probably a good way of doing it as well. Um, but yeah, I hope this video has uh, inspired you into maybe making your own type of mob trap of a similar type. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will catch you next time.